Okay. Um, I'd like to, uh, uh, Jack Creighton, Chairman of the Coasset Select Board, I'd like to uh, bring to order a newly formed Select Board kit, uh, Committee, the Zoning Bylaw. Um, this meeting is uh, covered by Zoom. I don't have all the, uh, the correct wordage there, but it is being recorded. People who are watching um, can raise their hand and participate, but only at the discretion of the chair. And this is basically a meeting of the zoning uh, bylaw committee, which was constituted by the select board to uh, redo and rewrite uh, the town of Cohasset zoning bylaws. Um, for expediency purposes, um, this committee grew out of the master plan implementation committee, which set up a zoning bylaw and Tom Callahan was chairing that. And so this is his successor. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm gonna open this meeting with a roll call. And then, um, so let's start off with Tom. I'm Tom Callahan here. Yeah. Uh, Clark. Clark Brewer here. David Farag. Uh, David Farag here. I've been appointed and duly sworn in. Yes, um, Jack Creighton here. So um, we are going to the direction of the select board, continue on with the structure um, that was previously agreed upon with Tom Callahan, you know, chairing this meeting. So Tom, if you would uh, take over and chair. And, and my role here will be, um, you know, as another bylaw member, I would suggest that the select board has encouraged all of our committees because uh, we have a lot of work to do. Comments should be kept very short to the point. Um, listen to other comments, comment on those comments, and we want to see if we can move things um, along. You've got a bylaw. We have an awful lot of work to do. So short and efficient. I have a long-term financial planning that I have to attend in about 25 minutes. I see Cassie is here. Hey guys, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Do, you have, do you have your video? Uh, so I'm just running around cooking dinner um, for my two-year-old. So I just didn't want to distract anyone. I don't have my video on. Um, That's technically good. because this is an official thing, an official meeting, um, the, uh, the powers that be on the state level have decided that if the video is not there, that you're not properly in attendance. So please don't shoot the message. And I can smell the dinner from over here. I'm getting hungry, Cassie. Right. Okay, Tom. That's uh, news to the rest of us. But anyway, we can let's move on. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so the agenda is a little different than what originally was planned a couple of weeks ago when this meeting was postponed to tonight. Um, tomorrow, we are invited to a joint meeting live at Wilcott Commons, but also by Zoom um, with the select board to finalize the path forward for the zoning bylaw. And in connection with that, Jack had asked me to prepare a, a set of bullet points for that, as I understand the select board are doing that, and I understand town council is doing that, and town council has just circulated something in the last hour and a half. Um, so if I can share the screen, I guess everybody can see it now. Uh, this is what I put together as the highlights for our committee um, and both what we are looking for going forward and both and uh, where we have been and uh, what is the game plan going forward. Um, at the moment, this is drafted in the understanding that we will proceed in a two-step process between the next two town meetings. Uh, the spring 23 town meeting was always the, law, the uh, goal for the completion of the bylaw work. Uh, whether we do that or not tomorrow night, will be the subject of the joint meeting. Um, so I want to, here's the document. We are comments to this document by Jackson's request for time. I will defer you first for any comments you have about 
these bullet points. Jack? What? I'm going to, Jack. because you're pressed, but you're pressed for time to go to your select board meeting. I'm going to see if you start with you, if you have any comments on oh, these bullet I'm points. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the, the comment that I have is that um, the select board um, obviously pointed this because it's important. It's a very important. Um, it's a long term. Um, we had we spent a lot of time deciding who would be on this. So um, I think you're going to find good select board support. We'd like to see, and by the way, tomorrow night on um, the select board will um, give you some things of particular interest, but in general, it's that I, that I want all of you to know that this is important. You have support. Um, we have devoted um, a lot of legal time from town council um, and they have some judge Cutler who is extraordinarily well-respected and probably the reigning expert and zoning expert in the Commonwealth. So we have given you the tools and what we'd like you to do is very simply um, look at what is needed for the town, be clear and succinct. Um, if you have uh, discussions the discussions, and, and this is, we're doing this to everybody because we have aggressive things to get things, you know, um, done. Um, let us know what you think is doable, um, consensus. And um, we understand that a lot of the, this is organizational, which is, the, the uh, zoning code is a little bit disjointed. Um, KP Law will help you with that. Uh, Tom's done a lot of work on that. Um, the other members of, on here, David's done a lot of work. Clark's been on planning for a long period of time. Um, Cassie has um, done a number, a number of things in this thing. So we have the expertise. So let's work together and get this doable. We would like to have everything ready for the spring town meeting um, if things were ready for the fall, but I don't think that's practical. But if you think there are things that need to be done, and certainly if, in this, if it is in the opinion of this bylaw committee, that there are things that might be termed um, moving before the horses have all left the barn, that is something that we would we would not rule out. It may be, it may be necessary to do that. Um, although personally, I suspect that the horses that are going to leave the barn have already left the barn because they they all they they all know what's coming. Um, but in any event, um, we thank you by the way for all the work that you're about to do. So, and we will. Yeah, quick question for you: Has has the select board weighed in on the timeline that we've proposed? That is for Not tomorrow. Yet. That's for That's tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Yes. And if you think it's too aggressive tonight or whatever. I was, I didn't know if anyone listened to the, um, or I don't know if that got posted, just the feedback from the master planning implementation committee. And I'm <clears throat> more than happy to give an update, but that was just one thing, just the question on the timeline and is it too aggressive, um, you know, and, and going to be ineffective on our end. Um, <laughs> That and just the communication piece of having the right support and being able to communicate um, effectively to um, the greater board, I mean, the greater community. Um, those were just the two big things that I think came to mind um, as far as feedback. I think Cassandra was there too, um, but those are the two big ones that came out of the Master Planning Implementation Committee. Well, we're, we're, we're certainly aware of that. Um, and one of the reasons why you are no longer constituted as a subcommittee of the master plan implementation is we're signaling that we are asking you to go forward. And if you think that that's too aggressive, but you are not part of the master plan implementation 
committee, you don't answer to them, you answer directly to the select board. Mm -hmm. And there's why we did that. Um, yeah. You know, somebody once said, um, Kalas, it's very good at researching and discussing things forever. Um, we kind of want to get stuff done. So, um, but that's a good question, Cassie. Thank you. Yeah, and I just say to Cassie that the Master Plan Implementation Committee might not be aware of it, but um, that the steps of community engagement and communication are already being put into place and have been discussed. Um, okay. And we can discuss that tonight too, but all right. Anything else, Jack? No, just, right. you know, just this does bring up one thing. We don't have to, we don't have to retail old ground. We don't have to worry about what happened a year and a half ago, because that's in the past. Um, and we're moving forward. And uh, there's been a, a new structure in the select board, which will tend to be uh, more inclined to get stuff done. And also, you've already seen concrete examples of giving actual concrete support to you. One of the first things I did was, was assign town council to work with you, <clears throat> provide you with resources, including town council and their specialist, Judge Cutler. So you're going to, you, you know, we're, you, you, you're going to have our back. We're going to have our back. All right. Thank yeah. you, Jack. All right. Have we received, Tom, did we receive anything yet from town council? Yes, yes. We'll, awesome. uh, I'll explain that in a moment. Clark, I, I, I want to keep in a sort of an order here. I, I don't just want to wait. A question for Jack about following up with the E code 360 on how quick they can turn things around. With what is E code? That's, that's the people the, that maintain our zoning bylaws that, that, and, and that haven't been updated from um, the the online version, Clark, right? The, yes, it's the, the online it's, version. Yeah, it's it the takes them a very long time to, to update. Like it took years for them to put it together in the first place. Um, and uh, Jack, you said that we'll make a phone call and, and we'll we'll get commitment from them to, uh, to to move things along on a time frame. And that that is something that maybe we can still follow up on. Thank you, Clark. I, I could <clears throat> answer that that I talk to town council about that problem in the past as well as with Jack and it is a problem I mean the last change to article 11 of the bylaw with land clearing and um, land alteration just just came on e360 and it was passed months ago we will be able to have a word version of the bylaw as it is amended and, and it's going to be done in two if it's done in two steps uh, that can be the official version. I mean, E360 is just a vendor who puts it in a certain format and puts it online, but there's nothing that would stop us from putting an interim, a, a word version based on the actual votes at town meeting. And I'm going to recommend that we do that because especially mm -hmm. if we do it in two steps, there's going to be an uh, interim uh, where some of the bylaws has been changed and other parts of it haven't been changed. So I think we can get around that, but I, I Again, it's the contract is with the town. The select board is in charge of that contract. And I agree that we should get a commitment from them and give them the heads up that this is coming. And they, they oh, should well, be. we should. Well, it's very simple. Is this committee um, has those things? Just make a note of it. Um, and we'll, you know, we will um, send it to that. But, you know, you're that's what you guys are doing. That's why we gave you your own committee and aren't reporting. So that's a good point. And that should be, uh, you know, you know, Mr. Chair, that should be on your bullet list of things to do. Yeah, I, I just, but from the past work of the working group where we ever discussed this, the, the contract is not within the working groups and nor this committee's purview. So when we get to that point, there's just going to have to be yes. su support and push from the town manager, the town procurement director, and, okay. and the select board to get them to well, do that, what they can do. But we can that, we can do that, an that interim. Point, let us know. Yeah, no, but we in the okay. meantime we'll we'll have interim versions up. And I shouldn't have said word format. It'll be in PDF format so that nobody okay. can nobody can mess with the, the word document. All right, um, Cassie, in terms of seniority of the carryover from the working group, I'll go with you next if you have any comments about these bullet points. 
I do not. Okay. Um, I'll be glad, <clears throat> be glad to understand the thinking behind all of this. Uh, uh, Clark? No, I think it's a pretty good, um, a pretty good outline. I, I will say that um, with KP Law's uh, proposal and with this this timeline, that I still think that the missing piece is um, taking the uh, recommendations from the master plan and 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 converting them into uh, kind of actionable um, or more specific goals that that apply to uh, the, would apply to the zoning bylaw, and and getting those. Um, uh, uh, kind of reviewed, updated, and um, uh, built a consensus on those with the stakeholders before we go to the public. I mean, I could see like top ten zoning goals or 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 or, or fifteen top zoning goals that are actionable um, and specific, so that um, right. we're writing a zoning bylaw changes um, with those goals uh, as a foundation. I mean, they're they're kind of articulated well, the master plan, but no, I, I understand that. What I would suggest is this: um, on the assumption that the first public forum will still be on for the fifteenth, uh, one of the slides and one of the points you want to make, since that first forum is intended to be sort of a mile high overview, is a slide. Why are we doing this? And it, you know, you, you, we discussed this in the planning board, and we discussed this one on one that. There, there are various philosophical underpinnings of this, you know, reorganization, housekeeping versus, as well as certain substantive changes. So um, if you want to take it on, if you don't mind pulling out from the master plan, what you think should be included in that, I, you know, we, we can discuss incorporating that okay. in, into the public forum. And again, we'll, we'll get the green light for the forum tomorrow night or not, so. Um, Mm -hmm. All right. Well, again, I think maybe the top 10 or 15 uh, zoning goals that we can uh, circulate and build consensus. Like, well, all right. I, I, you can see that. I, I understand, though, that the rewrite of the bylaw is every goal and objective. And of course, some are more important than others. But um, the it is, I mean, in terms of prioritizing them for, for, for you know, it, it, it was. Jack and the board, uh, Jack and the select board that first suggested doing this in two parts. I think in the working group, we envisioned two, maybe three steps, but when you get into the actual nitty gritty of it, it's hard to split things up because some changes in one part begins mm -hmm. changes in another part, but blah, blah, blah. You know, when we get to the real substantive stuff, which we, at the moment is scheduled for spring 23, we may decide that you know, dealing with 12 substantive things is too much for that town meeting and split some of them off again to mm -hmm. fall 23. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, ultimately all of those goals and objectives of the master plan will get addressed one way or other. Either we will incorporate those goals and objectives or we will choose not to. And then of course the citizenry at town meeting could choose to incorporate them or not. So if you want to pull that together though, Clark, I'd appreciate your help with yep. doing that. I, I might say that's a very positive. Make a list of the things and then go down the list and say yay, nay, or think about it. Um, we're really trying to help all the boards and that are, have similar things to help you narrow it down and get to the to the basic things. So get the, get that list, Clark. That's a good thing for you to do. Um, and then you as a committee would want to look at that list and say, hey, this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. And then it will ultimately be drafted in, in the legal statutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, David, uh, first uh, formal welcome to this committee. And thank you for willing, being willing to step up and serve. Uh, David comes to us from the Isle of Guernsey in the English Channel, and I appreciate him being here. It's near midnight his time. So, David, any comments on these bullet points? Yes, great. Thank you, Tom. Um, and can everyone hear me clearly? Yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, I, I think one of the things that needs to be added to the scope is for KP Law to, uh, it, it talks about uh, being able to do uh, groups and things would be to also to present uh, for town meeting. And it would be 
uh, it would be limited to the scope of the diagnostic that they do. Uh, they certainly wouldn't talk to the issue if a bylaw is rewritten of whether it should be a yes or no, they would leave that to the boards and town meeting, uh, but they could certainly speak to any diagnostic they do on our current bylaw and what issues there are that they found in reviewing it uh, in regards to other towns. And we don't know what that is at this point until they do it, uh, but I think that would be something to highlight when you're talking about uh, in the beginnings of why are we doing this and beyond beyond trying to implement the master plan and things like that. Um, when we've had other bylaws that have gone through before, whether it's been the village bylaw or the uh, stormwater bylaw, uh, we've always had uh, consultants uh, who helped uh, with that process uh, present to town meeting. And that was very helpful in illuminating, I think, for town meeting in, in the ultimate passage of both of those bylaws. Uh, so that would be one thing that, that I think should be added to it. Uh, and, that, and then uh, secondarily, I know it's, uh, it's brought up in, in the uh, script that Tom did, is uh, to make sure that it includes, uh, it might be refined more, but that they're going to do a diagnostic of the current uh, bylaw. And then, of course, take uh, the work that Tom and the, and the previous working group had did and look over that as well. Let me address that for a moment, because I had another long discussion with Carolyn. So. Um, let me just throw this, I don't want to, I'm not going to screen here for the moment, but, um, so I, you know, in, in pulling the zoning working group back together and speaking with the select board, I was permitted to talk to Carolyn and Judge Cutler, and I did so back at the end of June. And I gave them some, you know, verbally, pretty much the orientation memo that I circulated to everyone here at, the, at our first meeting a few weeks ago. Um, we were on the same page, and then I, uh, the, the scope that I drafted was a follow-up to that meeting, and I, I was asked to do that not as a result of that meeting, but later on by, by our staff to put that together, which I presume came from the powers of that above me, and, um, and then Carolyn's scope, you know, sort of, uh, her initial scope came out of the blue and kind of hit me, but we, we are not on different pages. What Carolyn has presented in the long thing and her bullet points that she circulated tonight, uh, late today, is, is the typical, if they were starting from scratch with a community and they were gonna be the lead authors and drafters of a bylaw. Um, I think she'll, she and I are on the same page and I think she'll agree that we are well into step two, if not three, in some aspects of her scope. And we realize, and what I present to the select board tomorrow, is that this would be a, a true partnership. But the, the working group has always operated from the uh, uh, philosophy that this has to come, the new bylaw has to come from the town, from its members of its committees and from the people themselves through forums and, and the ultimately town meeting. Um, we had with the original working group, uh, the experience, experiential talent to do this in-house and that may differ from other communities that uh, KP deals with. But, you know, I don't find Carol in, in, is in any disagreement with that. Um, and we realize, and we both come to the conclusion that if we are going to keep on the current proposed timeline, there isn't time for a full diagnostic of the bylaw. I mean, as a whole, we will be dealing with things mm -hmm. in chapter by chapter or, or article by article, and we'll be dealing it as we go. But I fully expect KP is going to critique okay. what we have. Um, yeah. Cheers, right. me, Tom. I, I do have to go to this other All meeting. right. All right. Um, thank each and every one of you for fun. your time here. And, and we're making some progress. And uh, again, Get it down to the, the, the basic things, and um, you'll find that we are glad to support you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So, all right. Thank you, Jack. All right. So um, I, I just, uh, you know, I think you're going to find that we're on the same page as to where we are. And it's, 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 it's a hybrid of them starting from scratch and them starting from the working mm -hmm. the work product that we've done to date. Um, I don't need to go over why, but for whatever reason, it's unfortunate council wasn't involved with the working group sooner, but it is what it is. 
Um, and, and, um, here, and here we are, but but you're, you're going to find that we're going to have a full partnership and there's nothing that's drafted that isn't going to have their touch on it. Um, the point of them explaining legalities of what we change and what we're doing, I think is a good one. And I fully expect them to not only participate in the public forums, um, they can't be to all of our meetings like tonight because they have commitments to other communities and both Carolyn and Judge Cutler were otherwise engaged tonight. But, And I fully expect them to be an active participant, but obviously the presentation is going to come from the committee when we get to town meeting. So. Tom, quick uh, uh, yeah. just discussion about this. Uh, I, you know, I think the diagnostics uh, part is okay. And, and I think KP can do diagnostics on our current zoning bylaw. They can also do diagnostics on what you've drafted so far. And, and I really think we're gonna get the best um, uh, effort from them uh, if, if we really ask them for a reality check on, on both of those um, documents, both the ones that are in place, like what's good, what works, what's problematic in other towns, um, uh, as well as um, the other side of that. What are the best practices? What are the other communities doing to control growth? I mean, 15 years ago, it was a uh, large home review because of mansionization. Okay, that was the, that was the current, current cutting edge tool. So I think they can provide us with those those level of yep. detail on what you've drafted as well as on our current bylaw. Correct, and that's fully expected as we move through time. Yeah, no, and that's fully that's fully how we anticipate this going forward. Except it's not, you know, perhaps if we had engaged them six months ago, then they could go over the whole bylaw and give us a diagnostic of the whole thing in one fell swoop. But it's got, all of the things they are proposing is just going to be happening in the, in the steps as we go through section by section of the bylaw. And I am, in, I am not only anticipating, but expecting, and I've made this clear to her that, you know, you know more towns and what other towns are doing. And there's, yes, no, yes. there's no pride here that we can't borrow from other towns. We usually do. Um, and so well, I fully I expect they're going to be as engaged as you think they're going to be engaged. I can assure you of that. I was, I was on the MAPC regional planning group for a decade. And really what's amazing is all of the towns that are similar to Cohasset um, uh, in the region are working on the same problems. And some yeah. of them are a little bit ahead of us and we're a little bit ahead of, than others. Uh, but um, there's no sense reinventing the wheel if... Right. Uh, if the wheel's already been roughly rounded out, then we can use what other people are doing. So I think the best practices um, uh, tie-in for KP law uh, uh, is, uh, is, is terrific. And that can happen anytime in the, yep. in the process. Yep. No, and, and one of the objectives of the working group has always been where places where Cohasset is an outlier from other communities that maybe we not become an outlier anymore and get in line with best practices. And, you know, there is where um, opinion from town council is going to be immensely helpful because they know what's going on in the case law. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Judge Cutler was a judge of the land court who deals with zoning issues as their regular part of their work. So she's much more attuned into what's going on in day to day with the case law and everything. So it, it, I think it's going to be a great partnership and it's a shame they weren't brought in earlier, but so be it. Here we Can are. Can we all look up uh, all of her decisions and, and read them ahead of time? Uh, you, you know what, if, I don't know, uh, well, I don't know if you can do you, the land court. You can probably search decisions, but I don't know if you can search it by judge. You can Google her and you'll, you'll find her biography. And usually with judges, you sometimes find, particularly if you find complaints. <laughs> well, it pops up on the on the title of each uh, of each case. Yeah, know? yeah. I mean, some if you Google her, you'll probably come across some of the decisions that she's authored. And uh, I will tell you the one thing is that just by sheer chance when we settled on the new organizational format of bringing the articles from our current 22 down consolidated into nine or 10, uh, we settled, uh, you know, based on Woody's research, we settled on Concord. And it's the, it's the organizational model of the Concord bylaw. Well, apparently I think Judge Cutler is from Concord. So she was very flattered that we were 
we were following Concord's model in that respect. But I, I think, you know, tomorrow night, the objective tomorrow is for the select board to settle on that scope. Uh, that is why, and until that was done, KP was not um, submitting anything. So that's why we don't have any of their comments on the uh, draft article one of the bylaw, but I would expect to have that by the next meeting because I understand it's already a work in progress. But um, did you think that gonna... their fee was fair? I'm sorry, say that again. Did you think that their fee was fair based on the amount of hours? I don't know if you did that. Yeah, I think I should just be yeah, I should just be sharing it and I've saved the town gazillions of dollars. But no, I, I it is what it is for town council. I think it's it's fine. But I think it's that's just, why it's important, right? If if you weigh in on what it Yeah, what it yeah, costs. no, I I don't have a problem with their fee at all. Um things that you know and the other thing about the you know by the way the other thing about the uh the bullet points under zbc requests because you know i talked with some of our former working group people and it's you know make sure you put in what the zbc needs and wants and if other resources third party resources need a commitment to providing them uh, you know that's important that you know, we solicited a, a consultant to perhaps do the public outreach. We didn't get anything good. So, you know, we're doing it in-house. Um, no, 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 but if we need it. things in the future beyond KP, like engineering resources or build-out scenario, I just want to make sure the select board is ready and willing to commit those resources as we need them going along. No, as, as you know, I mean, I, I work with a lot of consultants. I hire engineers for specific things, just yeah. like we, we do on the on the planning board to review projects. So, you know, I, I, I think we just want to make sure that whatever we ask KP lot to do, that it's, um, you know, it's defined and, and, and specific, not like a general, what do we do? Right. No, that, that's, uh, that's, uh, goes without saying in, in, in retaining outside expertise that we have to be very specific of the scope of work. So yeah, I just wanted to say I, I, I'm looking forward to a great partnership with them. I think I, I'm so far, I don't know about you, Clark, I'm very pleasantly pleased with the work we've received from them. So I, I expect that going forward with this process as well. Yeah, they seem thorough, proactive, professional, and, um, and, and they make, uh, I think, our job easier. And that's what right. we want. Um, the only other thing I'll say, you know, I appreciate everyone. David, did you have anything else? I didn't want to cut you off. But... Uh, no, not on this point. Okay. No, I, I appreciate everyone's support for this, and we, it will be circulated to the select board. I, it, ha it hasn't been yet because I knew we were going to discuss it tonight, so it will be circulated tomorrow. I'm going to recirculate to them the the timeline only because I'm I'm not quite clear that every select board person has seen it although it's been given to some of them. Um, just on that timeline, you know, again, when the working group started the you know in 20, 2020, the objective was to shoot for spring twenty three to have this done, and then when the committee broke up and Jack and I were talking and getting, trying to get it back together and on track. Uh, there was no, there was a joint meeting by the way too, uh, in some point in 2021 that reaffirmed the 2023 target. Um, Jack and I didn't, you know, there was no uh, suggestion to change that timeline. And then Jack at first suggested breaking it up into two pieces and you know, I said that's not easy because change begets change elsewhere, but uh, I think there's a logical way of doing it that I propose. But I will tell you that there's one select person that's thrown out the idea of doing it all at once. Uh, you know, town meeting in 1955 apparently oh, did it all. Sorry, you said thrown out as an no, idea? Thro thrown, thrown, thrown out the idea that we do it, we do the bylaw all at once. Um, and then and get I, one, like one, one vote for the whole. Well, vote. no, just dealing with, I, I would never suggest just one vote on the whole thing, yay or nay, because I think you still want to break it up into articles and into pieces so that you get some things and you might not get others. Um, and that's the, the approach of this timeline is to do that. You know, nine articles on reorganization where you could just do it one, but you, you want to get what you can get. 
No, but I, they're suggesting that you would deal with the whole bylaw change, both the reorganization piece and the substantive piece at one town meeting session. And I said, right. well, that's fi fine if you want to try that, but that's going to require two or three nights of meetings separate from the rest of town meetings business. But And that we'll, we'll mean, see. That would mean yeah. just one one major overhaul of the correct uh, by the consultant instead of one and, and then another major overhaul where, yeah, the, where we the, the, where the, the bylaw would be in limbo for you know potentially years well no what what would happen in the in the one of the articles that i proposed if we'd go forward at fall town meeting with reorganization is there would have to be an article that deals with the transition so for example if we are changing definitions or just reorganizing them and the uses of the use table simplifying them which is the proposal how does that affect other places in the bylaw that refer to definitions? Well, we have to have an article that conforms all the definitions so that there's a transitional phase we would have it, you know, from December town meeting until May town meeting, we'd have a text of the bylaw that's reorganized, but still has a lot of the old substantive sections. And then, you know, at the second town meeting where we do substantive change and the attorney general approves it, then we'd have the final clean set. But there's no reason we can't do a transitional phase where we reorganize and and then do substance in the second meeting. And that's why I-, I It's hard to work with having, um, you know, different reference numbers and, and different chapters uh, for some uh, aspects of the bylaw, and then the old stuff, it's, it, it it would almost it, it would almost make sense to do the whole reorganization without without the substantive changes that you yeah well yes. that's that's what the and fall then post up yeah. instead of having e code three hundred and sixty just just have a a PDF uh, attached right. to the town website and not use e three code two hundred and sixty and until they they can get that together. Right, that, that that could be, and and the reorganization, by the way, for, for reor consolidating the, well, we have twenty two articles, but two don't longer apply. We really have twenty articles. Can, can to consolidate twenty articles into nine, we would just be moving pieces, and so existing parts of the bylaw would still exist. They would just be renumbered, but they they wouldn't be changed. They'd just be moved, and that's why despite the aggressive timeline and that we have to have fall town meeting articles ready by September, uh, late September, um, it is really just moving pieces around. I mean, yes, I'm also proposing that you deal with articles one, two, three, and four, and then leave five, six, seven, eight, and nine for the spring, but it can be done. But and as long, as long as people understand it's largely, a, largely a, a moving around a piece, existing pieces, it can be done. And like you said, we can do a transitional text to, until we get to the spring. Well, I think we would have to have a transitional file on in PDF form and, yeah. and, and have nobody look at the E-code 360. I mean, it, it, we'd have to shut it down until they can get it updated. Yeah, that 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 might need to be what's done, but we will, you know, we'll, let's cross that bridge when we come to it. But um, yeah, you know, as I've been going along here in anticipating this, you know, and I have free time at night, I am starting to do that so that, you know, certainly for town meeting, we have to explain to people what is this going to look like if we pass all this stuff, and it'll be ready to go, and people will be able to read it, touch it, feel it. Um, uh, but it is all doable. But again, it's you know, we've there's this thing with this meeting tomorrow night, um, the selectmen taking charge of this process, everyone wanting to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, it, it, we've lost three weeks here and, and it's, again, it's an aggressive schedule to get ready for everything for December, but you know, if the, if the select board, you know, and I'm, we, we go ahead with pitching that idea tomorrow night, but if the select board comes back and say, you know, too aggressive, let's do it spring and fall 23. You know, personally, at this point, I'm okay with it. The horse is going to be out of the barn, no matter which way we go, people may file zoning freezes, there's nothing we can do about it. So I, we can do it. I, I think that doing, doing as much as possible once is, it, it, it has some advantages. Um, yeah. 
and and I've, I've always said that i don't i don't like fall town meeting for zoning stuff but well, i mean 19, I, like, 1955 the entire bylaw brand new was passed at a special town meeting so i don't want to hear that with all due respect well, you know look, you know my position on it's that, just so. been the tradition for a decade and a half and it's um, it, it makes and no sense. Maybe exceptions, but I don't want to get in a big fight over it. No. I, I did want to um, say there are some content things that probably need to be reviewed, like in in um, Article One, um, and the, you know there is some content. Yes, I'm wondering for the purpose of time, is it worth spending time on the articles or the presentation format for tomorrow night? No, oh, well, this will be our presentation format, and they'll have the timeline that I distributed apparently. Okay, so your PowerPoint, discussion. your PowerPoint's not being used. Or? Oh no, 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 no. The PowerPoint, the, the PowerPoint has is for the public forum. If if it goes, you know, and again, if if we are, are you not presenting? You're not showing that tomorrow in advance of public forum. Your presentation to to, to them? No, uh, Jack's made it clear tomorrow is relatively short and sweet, which is why he's asked every participant to do bullet points instead of going into long things. I. I've made it clear that if people have specific questions, I'll give, try to give them specific answers. But the, apparently, the, apparently the goal is not for a super in-depth discussion on the merits tomorrow. It's just to get to get us all on the same page on the path forward. Now, if the timeline continues in the way it's been proposed, uh, August is unfortunate to start a public forum, but again with the timeline and to try to get in a second forum in the fall um we don't have a lot of choice um the select board has also said they want to make use of our, their new media guy uh, justin was it justin schreer is it cassandra I, yeah and i've talked to justin and if you haven't noticed the lauren set up a separate page for the bylaw committee uh justin has posted the materials that hopefully we would have been discussing between now and September. Uh, so they're out there for people to look at. And, you know, Justin and I discussed, you know, 143 is not a town function, but we have a town website that Justin puts the weekly, you know, Chris's weekly update on. You know, and we discussed making wide use of that. You know, we, we do not have the Mariner anymore like in the old days. We have the, you know, the town website, we have the town Facebook page, we have the Colasset Anchor Facebook page that we could use in place of the Mariner. Um, you know, 143 will probably pick up on some of the things we do and probably will read a lot of comments on 143 and we'll have to decide how we just respond to 143 comments going forward. Um, I've tried in my comments to 143 so far is to try to give people reality checks. I don't think we should make any, you know, obviously not discuss substantive decision making on 143, but, uh, you know, those are going to be our vehicles going forward. That's what we have in the model, modern world is social media. Um, but, you know, the groundwork to make sure that's all in place is, is being laid. And, you know, Justin, in posting those things on the uh, bylaw committee's web page, uh, did it very quickly, very responsibly. So, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm looking for good things going forward in getting communications out quickly and, and efficiently from the town. So, um, the, as far as the slideshow goes, um, we can discuss that more in detail next week because we'll know whether we're going forward with it or not. I have received some comments from Cassie. Lauren and I have discussed the presentation of it where we'll probably both be doing it, uh, not just me. Again, I hope council is there to answer any questions. Um, I have done an edit of it based on my own thoughts about it, you know, making it much shorter. I always start out with writing way too much and then shortening things. Uh, I have given that to Lauren for comment. I can, again, I'll circulate it once we know tomorrow night what we're doing. Uh, I took some of Cassie's comments to heart too, because I, that's the only ones I have. But if anybody has thoughts, you, you have the long 31 slide version. It's going to be much less than that. But uh, it is intended to be the first, you know, sort of mile high overview What's zoning? What's the history of it? 
who's in charge of it, who does this, who does that. And here's the mile high overview of, in each article of the issues we have been thinking about or need to think about. And then hopefully, you know, people people have other thoughts. That's what we're there for. You know, if you've been reading 143 about you know, the blast thing up in North Cohasset in the village, there's, there's a lot of blanket comments about, oh, the bylaws essentially suck, they need to be changed, you know. So, okay, what do you, what do you want to change? And uh, then of course you don't hear a lot, but that's the part of the forum we want to get. We want to get the people what they think the problems are as well as Clark going over what the master plan uh, suggested the problems are or the issues are and, uh, and get some feedback. Um, one of the things I am concerned about at the forum is what happened at December town meeting is what do we do with out of town developers will show up then, but we'll figure that out. It's not town meeting, so we have different rules that we can apply, but we can discuss that when we get into the details. So we'll go forward with this tomorrow night and- um, um, is, it, is it something where we could ask, I don't know how you say it, but like, politely decline someone out of town to speak up at our special town or at our town meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just I'm just the thinking moderator. I'm just like the moderator is me. empowered to say yeah. Thank yeah, you. no, I, yeah. I, I, I we could talk I, to the moderator ahead of the meeting and say, look, we don't we don't think this is appropriate. For well the moderator is me and Lent Lawrence. So I'm I'm thinking about that. I mean oh, Dan what, Evans at town meeting. Oh, a town meeting. Yeah. yeah, town meeting is a different animal altogether. And, you know, one of the things that a town meeting didn't do was discuss who people are, what their interests might have been in a forum. I can certainly ask that. Wasn't question. that what Cassie was asking, or was he ask, Was she asking about um, our upcoming? Zone? I was asking about a town meeting, like where it really matters. For yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, I, town meeting, we need to lay the groundwork with the moderator and. You know, the rules are of town meeting though, that allowing out of town people to speak who would include our town council would, would is at the discretion of town meeting. So if town meeting wants to hear from somebody, you know, particularly as happened in December, someone who was a property owner in town but no longer a resident of the town, that's at the discretion of town meeting. And, and we deal with it, you know, we, we're gonna hear from people who are gonna oppose any change to the bylaw from our own citizens. So we're gonna to need to prepare for that at town meeting one way or the other, but. Um, you know, yeah, I think that's a good point, Tom. Yeah, if I, I mean, but, but it, it, it's not as much uh, the person or where they're from as, as to the substance of the matter that they're Correct. talking about. Correct. And, and, and you're gonna hear that whether it's from them or, or whether it's a friend of theirs or whether it's the council <laughs> who stands up, <laughs> you know, from their council. So you just have to be ready for whatever those, uh, uh, arguments are and or questions or, or what have you. That's really the, the main thing. I mean, I, is I, during the uh, stormwater bylaw, when that went through, and I think this is, this is important to know, uh, if you can remember that in 2008, uh, Charlie Humphreys, who was one of the attorneys in town who represented a number of developers and a number of different things, and, and that's fine. Uh, he got up and said that if the if the stormwater bylaw passes, he would never be able to retire because of all the litigation that it would create. Mm -hmm. And in yes. and in my nine years on the in my nine years on the concom, uh, once it passed, we had zero, right. zero, uh, 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 lawsuits. So you know these are things that you have to deal with, and it's it's not any knock on, on Charlie because you know he brought it up at the time, and and of course nobody knows what it it, it could have been at, uh, afterwards, but uh, these are some of the things that get brought up at town meeting, and so you just have right. to be prepared for them. And people need to realize that our bylaw, as it is, generates litigation as well. So, you know, you, you know, we, we, I don't know if anybody, I thought somebody either said it at a select board meeting or maybe at our planning board meeting, we can't let perfect be the enemy of good. Uh, we're not going to write a perfect bylaw. No, it is. Carolyn and I agree to that. We do the best we can based on the situation we have. And, and, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be, uh, to take people who think the sky is going to fall with a grain of salt. And, and that's a perfect example, Dave, because I don't believe we've ever had litigation over the stormwater bylaw. And now that affects so many properties in town. It's probably one of the more far reaching bylaws we've ever passed. Uh, all right. So um, let me get to where's the agenda? I got to find it. Hold on one sec. Uh, where did I put it? 
I'll stop the screen sharing. How do I do that? Stop share. Um, where did I put the agenda? Hold on a sec. What else are we going to just talk about? I'm sorry, my my bad that I didn't print it out today. All right. Um, just, so, for, just so I understand, for the master planning implementation, like we spent a good amount of time providing an update on what our group is working on. Is that something where we should just not even spend the time anymore in that committee talking about an update from us? You 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 shouldn't. Well, you're 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 the representative in this group to that committee. Uh, yeah, but I think because like because on a respent, well, well, let's, let look. We kind of had some of this discussion a little bit with the planning board. The whole point of setting up the working group and now this committee is because none of the other committees who would normally have jurisdiction, mainly the planning board and the zoning board, have the bandwidth to deal with this in their regular meetings. So we we are the point persons to deal with the substance of changing the bylaw. Um. I, you know, I made it clear to the select board of uh, my board last week, and Clark's now a member as well. And I, I have been giving regular updates to the planning board, and I continue. I expect to continue to give regular updates, but also recognizing that the planning board has a formal review process under state law, and uh, you know, so the planning board certainly is going to have a role. It's it's up to you as to what you want to report to the master plan implementation committee, and if they have some particular concerns, they're just like any other committee or member of the public that can express those concerns and and have us think about certain issues or a way to handle a certain issue. But uh, you know, the, 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 by the select board taking charge of this committee, the master plan is, committee is out and in, in any kind of supervisory role. If that helps you, but uh, I would. If I were you, I'd keep reporting to them what we're doing, what we're up to, because the more people we know, the better. And if they have some concerns or comments, you should bring them back to us. Yeah, it's, that's my whole point. I feel like I just shared the feedback and it almost was like yeah. you no longer report to that group. Not saying yeah. that you said it doesn't matter, yeah. but it felt like it didn't really matter. Well, the, I, I still consider you, although I'm not sure it was incorporated into the select board's new appointments, but I still consider you to be the master plan implementations committee's representative on this committee. So okay. uh, me, I think I think you should report it. Yeah, I, I who, who can't I see? Clark? Uh, Clark. All right, what's up? Excuse me. Yeah, no, in, re in relation to what Cassie's talking about, I, I still think there's a there's a bottom up top down kind of approach to uh, problem solving on uh, the evolution of the zoning bylaws, which what I'll, what I'll call this. Um, so I think at the zoning, the master plan implementation committee, uh, zoning board of appeals, planning board, board of selectmen, advisory are, are really all stakeholders in That's in what we're what we're trying to do. Um, so we want to be able to get buy in from from everyone, but we also want to be able to. The master plan implementation committee is are are now the the experts in in what um, has come out of the master plan, and you're you're perfectly suited to to inform um what we're doing here on the uh zoning bylaw committee yeah, absolutely uh, but i still think there's a top down up you know kind of back and forth that's how yeah and over the next yeah, that's over and, the, you know an unfortunate thing or unfortunate January. thing an unfortunate thing is going forward we don't have a member from the zoning board on this committee anymore and uh cassandra since you morris he's, he volunteered didn't he well, he isn't he isn't appointing it yet. I don't know where that stands right at the moment. But Cassandra, at minimum, and McMorris is not a member of the zoning board anymore. I don't believe. Oh, he's not on. I didn't know that. No, but I think Dave that's McMorris why McMorris is a part of the zoning board of appeals. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, if he gets on, great. If not, Cassandra, you're their point. You're their director and lead leader of that. So I'll hope that you'll report back and get some feedback from the zoning board from time to time. Uh, you know, I expect the zoning board to be very involved when we discuss the existing Article 8 about nonconformities. That would be the new Article 7. I, I, I frankly would prefer to sub it out to them and let them be take the first crack at any uh, suggestions of change. They've been change has been drafted and suggested to them, but I'd rather I'd like to see that they become the point person again, working in partnership with these other committees that have specific expertise uh, in a certain area. 
Um, I see that Mr. Sartrek has joined us. Wayne, are you going to show your pretty face? There you are. I what can we What can we do for you, Mr. Sartrek? Oh, just I'm just trying to. Um, Wayne, I'm curious. Okay. Okay. Now I. I I anticipate your curiosity as we go forward. So, uh, we were before you before you got on. We're we're in preparation for a joint meeting with the select board uh, tomorrow night. That's going to both be both live and by Zoom. I think it's the first test case of our hybrid meeting uh, plan. And um, and that at that the, the purpose of that meeting is to just get everybody on the same page and set the direction. For the bylaw rewrite going forward. So um, we're not really doing anything substantive beyond our preparation as a committee for that. We've been asked to do some bullet points on what we think of the highlights. So um, going back to the agenda, we took off everything else out. Um, again, until tomorrow night, um, we won't know if we're going forward with the first public forum. So we'll discuss the slideshow at our next meeting, which is next Monday. Um, we will discuss now, originally in the plan, both article one would already have been dealt with and article two, which is the reorganization of the definitions would be dealt with. So I'll put both of those on the agenda next week to see if we, or how far we get, but um, I'd like everybody, to, you know, again, if we're keeping to the same schedule um, and timeline, I'd like everybody to be prepared to look at the drafts of the new Article 1 and the new Article 2. Um, I thought we were going to talk about it tonight. So, I, I mean, I've reviewed Well, it. yeah, I, I did, but I see it's been removed from the agenda and I don't have town council's comments yet. So no. I'd rather that no, we just... No problem put it off. But again, I, the, the, the messing with the schedule over the last three weeks has just made it uh, more difficult for us. But, you know, well, and to be honest, I was looking forward to reviewing with KP Law's comments. Yeah, yeah, which I which I anticipate. So uh, uh, as far as as as, you know, the comments from this committee, I think going forward, uh, it would probably be best that if anybody has any comments in writing, well, if anybody has comments, let's put them in writing. And if you circulate them before the meeting, please just do so. Uh, you circulate to all, but nobody responds all. Uh, that, that doesn't create an open meeting or a problem. And, um, you know, we can discuss like in the planning board, every time we get material on an application, we put it up on the website. I guess we can uh, certainly citizen comments, if we get some, we can put those up, maybe the member comments as well. But it's best, to, you know, I want, since we are going to be covering a lot of material quickly in keeping with that timeline, I'd like to just make it as efficient as possible as we go forward. All right. Um, we don't have any other topics anticipated. So tomorrow is at 7 o'clock, not at 6.30. If you can't be live, you can get on a Zoom. I assume the uh, under the Board of Selectmen on the town web page is where you'll find the agenda and the Zoom link. David, don't feel obligated. Enjoy your vacation, but if you can join us, you can join us. Um, we have some minutes uh, for the, David. You weren't here, but for the four of us who were at the first meeting on the sixth, I don't know if everybody's seen those. I circulated them the next day. Um, I'd, I'd like to enter, just to get it out of the way, uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of July 6th. Someone? Clark or Cal? All right, I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of July 6th. Clark has seconded. Take a. Uh, alpha, all right, alpha, we, the planning board, we have order. We do alphabetical roll call. So, Clark? Well, we could, we could always just do all those. Uh, in favor, yeah, say all right. Right. Yeah, all right. It'll be uh, obvious well, whether. Yeah, all right. All, all in favor. Aye. 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 Best. It only saves about five seconds, though. All right. And uh, for the moment, I will continue to do minutes uh, to the best I can, but this is taped, so I can also go, always go back. Um, so we'll see you all tomorrow night. And um, 
we will present those bullet points and we'll see what happens. And uh, then we'll have our direction for going forward. If they choose not to do the two steps, we'll, we'll retool our schedule so that it isn't so intense. And, um, you know, we'll have there, there are, you know, when we get to substantive things, there's a lot of things that the, the bylaw, the working group had done a lot of research on things. Uh, I think there are some cases that are coming in front of the various town boards that are going to give us some real world examples on some issues. Uh, Great. You know, but we also, where we need to identify some outside help that isn't legal, um, you know, engineering or build out scenario kind of help, I'd like to try to identify those early on so that, you know, we, we are I, ready, ready for your. I, I could definitely see um, doing a draft uh, of a, a zoning map. Uh, for discussion purposes ahead of pat changing zoning. So we right, can well, yeah, I, yeah, I can, we That's can, we can. That's just an example. What yeah, we can about. blow up the map and right now, so you know, for the new article three, the current proposal is not to change the boundaries of the districts. It's in the com commercial ones is to rename them, consolidate the commercial districts on 3A, consolidate the polyglot that we have for zoning down in the harbor into the waterfront business district. You know, I, I, that, that's about it. But you know, in terms of wild boundary of, changes. Of outside so, consultants. Yeah, no, but in terms of wild boundary yes. changes, there's nothing proposed. So. Clark, I think to, an, to address your question, the Master Planning Commission um, Implementation Committee, I think Kasana was working on coming up with a date where um, our group was our committee was going to vote to move forward with the two scopes. One was the parking analysis downtown, and the other one was the MBTA community analysis and the build out scenario along through A. So, I, Cassandra, I don't think that that's been scheduled, right? No, uh, we have not been able to schedule it yet. We're trying to figure out what dates are available in between all of the other committees and board meetings that we have going on right now and that will work for uh, members as well. But both for context, Clark, both those scopes were circulated. If you want me to share them with you, just to understand what the consultant would be doing. Um, yeah, I, and and just it, to it, just to follow up on that, you know, as part of Stantec's study of the parking needs in the village, I think it made it into their scope. But I had asked Lauren to include for them to take a look at our parking bylaw and our commercial parking regulations. Um, Clark will know that on the planning board, when we dealt with a project on 3A recently, we changed at least the policy of what space, internal space, we count towards those parking space requirements. Um, you know, whether the actual requirements themselves, like, you know, one space per 100 feet or one space for 200 feet. Yeah, Tom, I remember that being a comment from the harbor um, process. Yeah. Um, yes. They, they said that it felt like the size of the spaces was antiquated, that the spaces was too was too big requirements for parking. Well, my, my, my experience with sizes of parking spaces, no matter where I go, is that today's cars and especially the SUVs are too wide, are too wide for the spaces that exist. I actually think spaces need to be wider. But anyway, the Stantec was asked to look at that part of our bylaw because up until this point, the working group had not focused on parking, not thought about parking, not suggested any change to parking, but it's probably not a bad idea to do it. The when I think unfortunately the report that was commissioned by the MAPC, I think what in 2019, just I think yeah. was done and then just sat on a shelf. Like there is some to-dos within that um, that just never got done, including wayfinding and signage. So it's, it would be a good start to pass that on. To yeah, yeah, well, no, and as we get forward to those articles under the new bylaw, we can we can dust them off and take a look at them because, uh, again, you, you know as well as I do, Cassie, they have not been any focus of the working group up to this point. Well, I think, there, um, excuse me, Tom, just a follow-up as a part of this discussion would be um, there's definitely data sets information that, that's critical to decision-making on, on each article of content. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, we, we probably want to start kind of pre-generating what, what, what is the information we need to get to make a decision on a certain zoning bylaw yep. uh, area of interest, um, whether mm -hmm. it's analysis or um, a study or whatever it is. 
or uh, town information like from the assessors yeah. well i i think that would be if if, I, if, our, if we find out by our next meeting next week that you know we have a completely different timeline i think that would be a good thing for us uh to to uh, do and and scope out for the future because we're going to have added time but we need to put that time to good use because uh uh, e even for the spring, articles would need to be ready by late January, early February at the latest. It's coming so, fast, zoning-wise. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. The other thing I just want to say about the other Stantec job is to do an analysis in preparation for the MBTA's uh, uh, affordable housing uh, plans. If any of you don't know about that, you know, there is a draft regulation or law out there about uh, communities developing more affordable housing options within a half mile of an MBTA facility. Makes sense. And the, did you see that information I sent Tom that kind of distilled all the information of what that? Yeah, yeah, no, it's very helpful. We'll, we'll discuss that uh, as we go forward. I don't want to step on Stantec's toes and discuss that too soon, but. You know, right now, the draft regs would call for Cohasset to have 750 units, which is over a third of our current housing stock. So there, there's a lot of work, and the town has made comments about that. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. But nevertheless, there is land that we're going to have to scope out that's available for that. In terms of the zoning districts, um, in anticipation of that, you know, as I said, 3A commercial districts, there's no reason of having a technology business and uh the highway business, you know, we, we could consolidate those into a single commercial district, but to deal with the anticipated housing needs, do we set off a multifamily housing only district or do we set off an overlay district? The, the right, new I saw that in your in your in your draft. Yeah, the, the the new legislation will allow us to make use of an overlay district, but the new legislation simply requires that we have zoning in place to allow for it to happen. Right. And, hey, so Dave, Dave know, has a question, I think. Yeah, and I, my only thought about that is that overlay makes more sense for us in the long term. But uh, all right, uh, Dave, I'm sorry. Thanks. What I was going to say is, is I know uh, Stantec was doing that for the for the uh, master plan implementation committee but that when it does come to uh the bylaw of presentation uh whatever the modifications look like is that it really needs to be visual uh and not just the legalese and words because when you have good point the, the bylaw uh, come and you say here's your you know 20 pages of bylaw anybody all they look at that and they say this is just government gobbledygook that that's all that it is and when we've had it before again even with the village one you know they did the visual on this is what you when the village bylaw went in this is what you could have in there based upon the village bylaw visually that's what you could have now you can't do that with every nuance of a zoning bylaw i understand that but even just a couple of the highlights of this is what you're you're changing if you're doing some things different on 3a or or in, in other places, uh, ha having the visual that goes along with it uh, and the build out analysis and things like that. I, I think that's very important to, to bring people up to date. And I know there's gonna be other meetings and public hearings and stuff, but a lot of people wait till town meeting to show up there uh, to, yeah. to, to, right. to see that they're not gonna necessarily be at it. In fact, probably 90% of the people will be at, at town meeting and not at a public hearing. So right, it, it's right. it's very crucial to have that no, in the presentation. It, it, it is, and, and it just reminds us that we, we we have to have the capability. And I don't know, you know, I, Cassandra, I don't know if you know where we stand with town engineer. Did we replace them yet? Uh, no, I don't. Um, there has not been a replacement and I, I don't know if there is a plan to replace that specific position. Okay. Well, that's just that just tells you know we have to generate these illustrations, and uh, so we will need to make sure we have the capability of doing that. And again, if someone who does illustrations and drawings for a living, who's on the committee, is capable of doing them, they can, they can certainly volunteer. I'm looking at Clark as I say that. <laughs> uh, hey, we, that's a great I, idea, and, and I, I I will also I designed tell you that, a dozen buildings in in Cohasset, and none have been built. Um, but, you know, sometimes, like Dave says, the, the visualization of an idea 
um, like what was done in the village, helps people understand the concepts and see, um, get on board or, with, with yeah. the concepts uh, yeah. uh, of zoning. And when we do the map, I think, you know, the place where there would be significant change to the map, but not ultimately change in the in the wider boundaries. Would well, include, maybe. I mean, it wouldn't. Would, no, but we the change in the water. have a discussion about what the boundaries of the, the current uh, boundaries as opposed to well, what. Yeah, we can. We, we can. I'm just saying up to, up to, up to date, that hasn't been there. But I think a, visual, a visualization of the harbor, for example, of the existing multiple zoning districts that are around the harbor and then the proposal to sort of consolidate that would be a great visual that people will need and we you know so i i just hope we have somebody who can play with the town zoning map easily and, and show us that illustration uh, i'm sure we'll develop the talent somehow for that so all right wayne you, you're opening your mouth are you talking yeah wanna... i'd love to i'd love to ask or make a couple of comments if i could yeah good uh, the first is, um, I think there's an obligation on the part of the town, but I don't know who in the town is going to take that obligation, and that is to provide the parking that you that we're talking about now. There's been different plans done by Cavanero. There's plans about doing going up behind the old uh, highway department garage, but there are also things, and I brought one up with with um, Lauren, and I talked about uh, Highland Court. That sort of you know Highland Avenue starts at the police station and goes right on down to Beach Street, and there's space along there that I think the town that the town owns that I think the town should look seriously at putting in ten or fifteen spaces there that will you know sort of help that part of the town that's more office yep. use and not retail. Secondly, there's you know there's other things that we can do. Unfortunately, we weren't smart enough to keep the land that we owned that ended up being land that the MBTA took so that our, our town parking lot is half MBA t, MBTA property. So anything we wanna do there in terms of a, a structure up above, we're gonna to have to get permission and probably have to pay something for it. But the, 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 our town is not unique in terms of what other like Hingham Center, Situate Center, Situate Harbor, whatever, where um, there just is not enough parking, convenient parking, to satisfy the requirements of the stores. So the, the stores are losing business because I've gone up and down the center of town and I can't find a parking space. So down it, I'll go up to Shaw's or I'll go somewhere else or I'll do that later. And, and it really has to be thought. And it can't be, you know, the poor person that has one building that might have parking space for two cars can't be required to have 10 cars. You know, right. and, and so that's it. Now, the second, that's number one. The second thing is land for affordable housing and, and, and that type of thing. The town owns property on 3A right next to one Cushing Highway, you know, right where the, the old nursing home was. They own mm -hmm. seven, 10, eight, you know, quite a bit of land. Yeah. I'm confident that there's land there that would perk and that in fact, that would be a spot that sort of wouldn't hurt anybody. It's on the edge of town. It's 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 a beautiful piece of property. The trustees of reservation has a lot of land there, and we should be looking at parcels like that. We either should. It's not far either. It, it's not far from the railroad, is it? Yeah. No. And, no. And, but it's not going to hurt anybody, you know, except for the fact that someone's going to say, "Well, we've got three thousand acres here. We want to keep that seven acres as part of that." Maybe it's worth using that seven or 10 acres of land for the public good to help yeah. you. A second place is, you know, we get into politics. Stasco has land behind the town hall. He made an offer a couple of years ago to the selectmen. If you give me the right to build one house off of Beach Street, you trade this little 50 foot piece, I'll give you 14 acres of land for nothing. What is wrong with a deal like that? You know what I mean? It, it is just something that we would then preserve it. We wouldn't be having three houses on it with six acres each that are, you know, that isn't doing anything. And that might be a place for some affordable housing right near the village. You can walk to the village and all that. So there are things that we should be looking at. And those are, those are real things. 
I, I'll say I'll say that let me say this about the park and the Stantec study is going to discover is going to look at the needs in the village and and I presume offer solutions and personally a deck is probably the only way to go but um, from a zoning perspective we already have in the village that there's no specific zoning requirements people like Cassie and her group are putting some spaces on their lot where they can but everybody's not going to be able to do that you know um, so, you know, from a zoning perspective, I don't know how much we can do about that part of it, but, you know, what Stantec comes up for recommendations, the town has to face and, and maybe swallow swallow the pill and, and do what's necessary if, uh, or, or take the fact that we won't have adequate parking. In so Tom, what would be the right forum for Wayne to present those parking scenarios or options? Well, to I think Stantec? he has to, well, if, assuming the Stantec proposal gets adopted and, and, and implemented and they start their study, uh, who, who's the committee supervising it? I guess it's master plan, uh, you know, and Lauren and Cassandra and staff. So I would get any comments about that and get it into the Stantec study. I think they would benefit greatly. You know, one of the things about Stantec when they bid for work in this job, they're all from out of town and they really didn't know Massachusetts or Cohasset very well. They're great urban planners, but, you know, having the perspective of somebody who owns property down there would be, I think, invaluable to them. Um, regarding the housing, you know, the, the state regulation of law is to draw a circle a, mile, a half mile around the train station. Well, we've got wetlands, we've got a cemetery. I think we all accept the fact that we're going to have this oblong parcel, you know, and, and they have to identify properties. They have to be of a certain size. I think they have to be five acres or better blah, 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 you know, so it's it's no doubt that these properties from the town line in Hingham, as far up as we need to go, like up, maybe up toward Avalon, it, it are gonna be looked at and studied and Stantec's gonna identify for them. I think we could do that ourselves, but I, so I think logically, if we are going to be compelled to do this housing and, you know, I don't wanna think we're just acting because we're being compelled. It is one of the objectives of the working group to develop affordable housing options in the town. That's going to be a logical spot. There's going to be some other logical spots that exist off 3A that are either privately owned now. Um, I mean, you know, personally, I think there's a spot that we're seeing the second permit on it in two years. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be feasible projects. The first one wasn't. I think that would be a great spot to put housing, but that's a different story. You know, the zoning isn't there to put it there today. So I get it. I think and on, my, on the on the master planning imp implementation committee, there's also a liaison from the affordable steering committee. So maybe that's the right forum to present these ideas to. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and this group, because again, affordable housing and multiple housing choices in Cohasset has been an objective of the bylaw working group since day one. The question is when we get to the 3A and those particular processes, like you're saying. Do we do it? Do we zone it for just residential and just encourage that, or we zone it as an overlay, where you know for mixed use? Because remembering we we have a very small commercial tax base. A commercial tax base is very fiscally beneficial to us because it doesn't generate mainly because it doesn't generate school children. Do we want to keep encouraging some commercial use in connection with? So that that that's a cho policy choice we're going to have to make. Is do we do we do this by overlay or in an independent residential district? And, and I came up with something very quickly that, that I thought about that I just want to share with you. And that is, should we be looking at the 100 Pond Street and Wheelwright Farm and Cedar Ledge Village and that are predominantly senior housing? It really, you know, that's what, you know, that's what it is today. Hmm. And do we go ahead with those complexes and say, you don't have to have that a single family house. You could create an apartment and make it a two family house if you wanted to, because the people now, the units in Wheelwright Farm, for instance, seem to be too large for what they need today. You know, they only need one bedroom and a kitchenette and they want this and affordability is there. So could you go ahead, any one of those units, they've all got two car garages and everything else. Well, two yeah. Garage is you know 400 square feet or something, and it that could be part of what another unit could be, but it would be up to the planning committee, planning board and stuff, to suggest something like that. Let's take existing buildings and allow them to be two families instead of only grandfathering older places that are two family. 
it's it's an interesting concept, but uh, the lawyer in me will tell you that you're also dealing in all of those cases with condominiums and the condo, they'd have to change their bylaws and 75% of the owners would have to want to do that. And I could anticipate that people who are paying six, $700,000 for these units aren't necessarily going to be keen on them getting subdivided, but it's certainly worth thinking about. But you're dealing with the third party with the condo associations that you're not dealing with in another context. But, uh, the funny thing about that is I think that there'd be a positive to it. And that is if someone's paying $500 now, but they're going to pay 300 and 300 and yeah. get a hundred dollars more or whatever it is, or yeah. that new, that new money coming in, the condo associations would love that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I, same number of streets, the same. Never amount. heard the idea. It's interesting, you know. The worst that my my thought about a lot of ideas is the worst that can be said. You know, and the same thing with proposing something to a judge is the worst they can say is no. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, but just the, it's that concept in my. You know, yeah, you really think about it, and it. Yeah. And these well, units housing, for the most part are going to be remodeled anyway. Housing okay. diversity is 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 a goal that's articulated in the master plan. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and and we've kicked around um, pocket neighborhoods and and cottage kind of style housing um, as as ways to to create that housing diversity. And um, you know your examples are are uh, along uh, that level of thinking. Yeah, and I'll tell you that one of the things we have discussed on the working group is the accessory dwelling bylaw that we have that's been on the books now since what, 2005, six. I think it's rarely if ever actually used. And like from my house as an example, the impediment is the septic upgrade I'd have to do. Um, but, you know, we have discussed, although we've not gotten into the merits and will discuss going forward, what do we do with the ADU bylaw? Do we retool it? Do we keep it? Do we you know, there's apparently a new vital, new model bylaw for ADUs that MAPC has put out. Uh, I think Lauren told me that Arlington, the city of Arlington, a town of Arlington, has recently implemented that. So, you know, that's where this would fall. I think under. we wanted to see what the state um, was coming up with for guidelines for ADUs. But in terms yeah. of fixing what we have, all we have to do is change like a, a half of a sentence so that changes could be made to the exterior. Whereas right now you yeah. can't create an accessory dwelling unit and make changes to the exterior, except for an emergency egress door, which isn't really practical for uh, making a one family house, uh, a family and a half. Um, you have to make changes. You have to add dormers, you do bump outs, you do yeah. all kinds of things. That's That would be a relatively simple change. And the safeguards that were in place of no more than 10 a year and no more than 100 total uh, are still there. And, and if one or two have been created over the last 15 years, it's, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It doesn't work. I mean, we can shut it down anytime if it gets out of hand. I, 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 I've already floated the idea of um, the Affordable Housing Committee uh, you know, subbing out review of the ADU bylaw to them for their initial go through and comments on changes. And I, I believe to date they have declined, but you know, when we get to that part of the bylaw, um, where, you know, the, the suggestion for condos, that's where this would all fall in. And so, you know- um, But it's literally a half a sentence that got- Yeah, no, no, and I, and, and I want to compare it to the model, but there is a model bylaw out there now. Yeah, you can, you can wait and do the model bylaw and get more- Yeah, yeah. Right. Or, you know, in the meantime, like you say, the zoning bylaw is always going to be a work in progress. Oh, yeah. So, All right. If there's not there's nothing else, I don't want to keep us too late since we might go another hour, two hours tomorrow night. Um, so I will. Uh, without any, Dwayne, thank you, and I look forward to your input as we go through this process. Um, but uh, watch tomorrow night because that's at least going to give us some direction on the timeline we're working with. So. All right. To uh, to motion to adjourn, please. Mark, mm -hmm. thank you. Second, anyone? Aye. Thank you. All right. All. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Cassie, speak. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> uh, everyone. All opposed. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow night.